Okay. And did you have some pictures that you wanted to share with us? Yeah, I can just, I just have a few pictures of the species that I work with. Okay. Um, I'll share my screen here. So the species that I work with here in Idaho and, and well, Idaho primarily is fall Chinook salmon in the Snake River. This is an example of a really big one. Um, yeah. And they can get up to, I think the record is 70 pounds. Uh, That's huge. So they, they can be extremely large and they make really long migrations. Yeah. Uh, and I use the their ear bones. So, oh. so fish have all bony fish have an ear bone that's right below their brain. It's called an otolith that grows in rings throughout their life. Every day it puts on a new ring of calcium carbonate and wow. the chemistry from the water gets trapped in there and you can reconstruct cool. where they've been. In some cases you can understand the chemistry or the, the temperature of the water they were in from that chemistry, where they've moved and how long they were there, how fast they were growing. Cause just like a tree, every, every one of those rings is wider if they're growing faster and thinner if they're growing slower. Wow. So I've spent, my PhD was looking at how the environmental changes in the Snake River have changed the timing of the migration of these fish to the ocean. And they're uh, another one that go from salt water to fresh water, correct? Yeah, yeah, they're born in- In uh, fresh in fresh water, fall Chinook spawn, right? Like Lewiston, Idaho is, is the center of spawning territory for fall Chinook. The mm -hmm. Elk Canyon Reach and the Clearwater River um, are their two big spawning reaches. That's awesome. And migrate to the ocean and, and live in the ocean for three to five years and then come back. Um, That's so cool. And then my work in the Amazon, so this is just to, illustrate where I'm working uh, is at the mouth of the Amazon River and you can see the Amazon rainforest as this dark yeah. area of uh, vegetation. Uh, it's almost as big as the United States. You can place the United States on the Amazon and wow. it's nearly as big. That really puts things into perspective. Yeah, it's huge. It's Our maps are often way off. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, flying over the Amazon is crazy. You just f fly for hours over this green that just goes on forever. It's amazing. Yeah. I work with fish that live in this estuary at the entrance of the Amazon River and that make migrations all the way up to the Andes Mountains. You can see the Andes as this wow. brown streak. Uh, they, they spawn in those headwater tributaries, um, and then the larvae float down to the estuary, grow there for a year or two, oh, wow. and make that migration back. Um, wow. That is one of those fish, they're called Goliath catfish, uh, the group, um, it's kind of the common name. This is a piraiba, which is not migratory, but it's the largest of these fish. Um, wow. And we've done work using their otoliths to understand where they migrate and how. Yeah. Uh, there's three species that we've worked with. Um, and this is the largest of them, although even the smallest gets really large. Very big, yeah. <laughs> um, and then the sawfish, which they're just a crazy animal. They, they look like a shark from the top. They have a dorsal fin and a big tail fin, but they have, <clears throat> they're flattened. You can and you can see their mouth is below their body. They're actually a ray, so they're more. I was say they remind me of stingrays. Yeah. Yeah. So they they're more closely related to a stingray than they are to a shark, but their body form looks very shark-like. And then they have this long rostrum in the front with teeth on it. They use that to feed. It it's covered in sensory nerves, and they can sense electrical currents. Um, of their prey. So they use those teeth to dig, um, but they also use it, they slash back and forth, um, kind of like a, like a billfish. 
um, mm-hmm. and they stun and impale their prey on that, and then they they kind of trap it against the bottom, and and then eat it, keep it there, and then until they can get their mouth on it, and then they eat it. Wow. They eat fish. That's amazing. And, yeah, but yeah. we we really don't know much about them. They're they're crazy cool animals. Yeah. Like one of these things that used to be distributed around the whole world and now they're extremely uh, endangered and we really know very little about their ecology their biology just really basic things yeah we don't know. Um, so i'm hoping to use the chemistry in those teeth because the teeth grow through their life just like the otoliths yeah, to cool. construct where they move mm-hmm. this is just um, some pictures of myself and Patricia Charvet uh, and a, a high school student that helped me down in Brazil. These are some of the sawfish rostrum that we that Patricia has collected, and these are we're wearing sawfish day T-shirts. International That's Sawfish awesome. Day was last Saturday. Oh, awesome! Yeah, and every yeah. year the, the Sawfish Conservation Society puts out a new T-shirt. That's amazing. Um, so yeah, and this is this is a picture of a huge sawfish rostrum from Colombia, or sorry, oh, wow. from Venezuela. It was caught in the '60s in Lake Maracaibo. Wow! And um, it's a it's just massive. But these yeah. fish get really big. They 15 feet is, is wow. You know, an adult a regular adult size. That's or amazing. Use, so anyway, that's just um, some of the, some pictures of the species I work with. This is a a rostral tooth from one of those oh, wow. sawfish. Um, and it, yeah, it's just huge. It's just, yeah, it's, it's as big as your big hand. As hand. <laughs> <laughs> that's amazing. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, Jens. I really appreciate you doing this interview with us today and. That was really fascinating. So thank you. I really, really appreciate it. Absolutely. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks for having me. And and if you have any questions, feel free to let me know. Okay. Thanks, Jen.